Hello, this is Dr. James Camp from Lee College in Baytown, Texas, and this is my third in a series on cell physiology basics, cell division. Cell division takes place in the context of a cell's life cycle, or cell cycle for short. Okay, uh, we're going to start the cell cycle. It's a cycle. You can start it at any point. So we're going to start it at the point where a cell has just divided and we have two daughter cells. We say that these two daughter cells are genetically identical because if we look at the nucleus, uh, they both have, say, a red chromosome and a green chromosome and a blue chromosome. Okay, um, now as you know, humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes. We're looking at a, a really simple organism here that has only three chromosomes, but uh, but let's say that they they do, for sake of argument, have a red, a green, and a blue chromosome. Uh, these two cells are genetically identical. They are not necessarily perfectly identical. They may have different numbers of mitochondria in them. For example, that one might have four, and this one might have three, or you know something like that. Uh, but they all have basically the same components. Uh, as as each other and they are genetically identical so what happens next uh, these cells have a decision to make um, one possibility which this bottom cell is going to take is that a cell can exit the cell cycle and become a functional cell somewhere in the body um, this functional cell is now said to be differentiated. It has made itself different from all other cells in the body. And the way it is differentiated is that um, it still has the red chromosome and the green chromosome and the blue chromosome, but it has, see I've shaded those with a light green and a light blue because it's turned off some of those key genes okay it's still using the full red chromosome but some of the genes on the green and some of the genes on the blue have been deactivated um, we say that this cell is epigenetically programmed um, epigenetics is the science of not um, not the genes themselves but how the genes are being used in a cell okay so this cell has has deactivated some of its green and blue genes and it has decided to specialize in becoming um, say a red type of cell okay it's it's uh, it is specially using those red genes to do something okay this cell is now said to be in a stage of the cell cycle known as g zero for zero growth okay it is not currently doesn't mean that it's not growing i mean the cell could actually get bigger but um, it is not currently growing in the sense of increasing the number of cells in the body it's not dividing anymore okay so one of these daughter cells decides to go g zero this is commonly the case with something in the body called stem cells that a stem cell will divide one of its daughter cells will differentiate, um, grow up and get a job, so to speak. Um, the other one will decide to stay home and have more children, will we'll, uh, stay in the cell cycle. Okay. So let's say this other daughter cell decides to stay in the cell cycle. What's the next step for it? The next step is that it gets a little bit bigger its uh, nucleus doesn't change any. It still has dark red and dark green and dark blue uh, chromosomes in there. Um, it still has its organelles scattered around, uh, but it's going to start uh, actively increasing in size and in, uh, building structures that it needs to replicate its DNA. 
This stage of the cell cycle is then called G1 for growth or gap. Uh, it's sometimes called a gap phase because nothing noticeable happens here. But it's called a growth phase or a gap phase one. Okay, after this, um, the cell is now nice and big. It stays about the same size, except that its nucleus is going to have to get a little bit bigger because now we're going to copy our DNA. We're going to end up with two copies of the red DNA, two copies of the green DNA, and uh, two copies of the blue DNA. Uh, this is known as S phase for synthesis, synthesis of new DNA. Uh, I don't actually like the word synthesis because to synthesize is to make something completely from scratch. And we're not synthesizing DNA, we're copying it. It really should be called the R phase for replication of DNA, but they didn't ask me. Okay, then we go to um, a phase where we have our two copies of red DNA, our two copies of green DNA, and our two copies of blue DNA already made. And now we're going to start increasing the number of organelles in the cell so that they're ready to divide. And we're gonna start organizing something called the spindle for cell division. This is phase G2. Okay. Um, now we need to get from here somehow down to a stage where um, we have we need to get down to a stage where we have uh, a cell ready to pinch apart and divide that can can give us this these two daughter cells now what would happen okay if we just drew a line right through the cell we had uh, uh, created up here okay we'd end up with don't draw this because this is not what actually happens we'd end up with um, two red squiggles and a green squiggle in the top cell, two blue squiggles and a green squiggle in the bottom cell. And when we cut that off to, uh, to do our cell division, oops, we now have one cell that has no blue genes and one cell that has no red genes those cells probably wouldn't be viable. They would just die instantly because they didn't have all of the genes necessary to survive. So in other words, we can't just go straight down from G2 to uh, the stage called cytokinesis. What we need instead is some method for sorting the DNA into, uh, into pairs, one of which goes to, you know, one of each pair goes to the top cell and one of each pair goes to the bottom cell. Fortunately, Mother Nature has provided us with a set of steps that uh, divide the DNA for us, and that set of steps is called mitosis. Uh, so uh, a lot of people incorrectly say when they're talking about cell division that a cell is going to go through mitosis, but that's not exactly true. The cell is going to go through the entire cell cycle, which as we saw includes G1 uh, and S phase and G2, and then it's going to end up, and that's gonna lead us into mitosis. So I like to call this mitotic division um, to highlight that it's, it's part of a bigger process. Okay, so the first step 
in mitosis, we have our cell. It's got a nucleus that is now starting to break down. And it's got its red DNA, its green DNA, and its blue DNA all starting to come together now into more organized structures called chromosomes. Uh, you'll notice that the chromosomes have sort of an X shape. That's because uh, there are now two copies of red, two copies of green, two copies of blue, because we went through S phase. Uh, we made copies of our DNA. They're held together at this big dot in the middle called a centromere. Uh, and so each each chromosome is called a sister chromatid. So at the same time, the mitotic spindle is starting to form so that we can divide these cells properly. And this whole thing, is, this whole stage is called prophase. Okay. After prophase, uh, we go all meta. We have metaphase. And this is the, uh, the stage at which um, the mitotic spindle finishes forming and it draws our uh, sister chromatids into uh, defined positions in the center in a line running along the center of the cell. And this line running along the center of the cell is called the metaphase plate. And that makes this easily the most recognizable stage of mitosis, if you were to look at it under the microscope. Then um, the cell starts um, squeezing a little at the middle and pulling towards the outsides. The mitotic spindles start getting shorter to pull the, uh, the sister chromatids apart, and the uh, centromere at the middle of the uh, at the middle of the, the chromosome finally replicates itself, splits apart, and so now we have red chromosomes being pulled to opposite sides, blue you know, green chromosomes being pulled to opposite sides, blue chromosomes being pulled to opposite sides of the cell because they, they are moving across or apart. That's our ana, like anatomy cutting apart. So this is ana phase, the coming apart phase. And then finally, the cell really starts to look like it's getting ready to split. Um, that's an ugly cell there, let's try it again. Um, and our two copies of red chromosome and two copies of green chromosome and two copies of blue chromosome have ended up at opposite ends of the cell and we can start to build a new nuclear envelope around each one. And that uh, is called telophase or telophase comes from the same root word as telescope, meaning at the far end of something. So these, these uh, chromosomes have now reached the far end of the cell, so we're at telophase. Uh, if you want a handy way to remember these, uh, P-M-A-T spells the handy word PAMAT. Okay, maybe that's not actually a word, but um, if you can remember PMAT or find some memory phase, phrase that works for you, um, you can, that might help you. Okay, so let's put it all together. Um, we have, uh, we, we start with two daughter cells. Um, if one of them decides to go into the cell cycle, she'll go through G1 first. Then she'll go through S equals copy DNA. Then she'll go through G2, 
then we get to the three phrases, four phases of mitosis, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. And that leaves us with one cell which has all the DNA in all the right places. For the cell to split. And so we finally go through cytokinesis and split into two new cells. Okay, that's all there is to it. Thank you for your attention. Have a good biology.